Hello and welcome to The Funnel Formula, How to Automate Your Sales and Set Yourself Free. I'm your host, Melissa Moss, Digital Marketing Strategist, and I'm here today with Devaney Freeman. Devaney helps heart-centered women in business to build their buzz online and get known as the go-to expert in their field. She does this by showing them step-by-step -step how to authentically grow an online following through social media and turn those followers into paying clients. In addition, her company, Heart Centered Social, offers done for you services to small business owners who want their social media and online marketing taken off their hands. So I'm so excited to have you here today, Devani. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to talk to you because I see you do something online that is fantastic. I've seen you run some challenges and I want to know, like, how did you get started with challenges? Yes. So a couple years ago, I was, you know, in my marketing world. Uh, I've been, you know, in the social media space for six years now and teaching and, and mentoring as well as running an agency. And I've done several different strategies for list building and lead generation, um, which is really important to be not just building your audience on social, but also to take that audience and convert it into email subscribers so you can build a deeper relationship. And I, I was wanting to come up with a new marketing strategy because I'm always like innovating and what's next and what's hot and what, what can really build audiences quickly and create the most engagement. And, um, and I was noticing like a, a trend starting to happen. And the first way I noticed it was through meditation. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Deepak, um, and Oprah Winfrey ran a 21 day meditation challenge. They still run this to this day. And there's like millions of people that go through this meditation challenge all over the world. It's absolutely incredible. And I was like, hmm, they got to be on to something here. <laughs> and then I saw a couple more pop up, like the Green Smoothie Girls. They got super known mm -hmm. for green smoothies and what they do through their challenges. And so I started to see this trend and I was like, okay, how do I apply this to my business? And so I ran a test run through my business, worked like gangbusters. And then I started then having my clients um, take action on the strategy. And it is an incredible way to quickly build your buzz, get known as the go-to resource, really position yourself, serve your community, mm -hmm. and be able to generate leads. That is awesome. And uh, yeah, I love the Simple Green Smoothie Girl. That's such a great example. And they, she actually um, came up yesterday on an interview. So that's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, that is awesome that you've been able to leverage that strategy for yourself and your clients. Um, so is there a magic ingredient or what, what it may be one of the ways that you can take someone from a follower on social and convert them into email? Nice. Yeah. So taking a follower from social, converting them into email takes, first of all, um, you positioning the right solution to their problem. So if you can let someone know that you have the answer to whatever it is that they're looking for. So it's really honing in on your ideal client, figuring out what exactly is it that they're struggling with and what is that solution and how can you position that solution and put that in front of them. So there's a few different ways that you can do that. Um, you can do that through Facebook ads. So that's a great way to, to be able to get people onto your email list. There's also, um, doing things strategically through Facebook groups and launching and running your own Facebook group, which is what I love about challenges because, because they kind of get kind of give you that burst of, of people to get in front of you um, to be able to, to build that Facebook group. Um, and then through, you know, your Facebook page through Instagram, there's so many ways, but it first starts with creating that really juicy lead magnet, which is solving the problem of what it is that they want. Mm. Awesome. Okay. 
So being super aligned in your messaging and able to really help them immediately is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I know marketing is a huge thing and we all want more leads, right? It just makes everything else better. Like you can't really have a funnel if you don't have leads, right? Um, right. In your business. So it's really great that we're talking about this. Um, but is this like, where does marketing fit into building like a coaching business? Like how, how do you get started in marketing your, your coaching business? Yes. Well, I mean, if you're trying to build a coaching business or whatever type of business, you have to have an audience to be able to market to, mm. you know, so that is the first step is building an audience. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to marketing, you can choose where you want that avenue to be. Do you want that avenue to be in person? Do you want it to be online? When I first started my business, I actually leveraged in-person networking and then I would take those networking connections and then I would uh, connect with them online and I would stay top of mind. Mm. So, and yeah. then with online, I started leveraging at the very beginning, my personal Facebook profile. People were like, what can you do business on your Facebook personal profile? And I'm like, think about it this way. Your personal profile is like a networking event. <laughs> you can control who you want to come to the party because you can strategically friend request people. So I would strategically reach out and friend request people that I knew that were movers and shakers in my area that were movers and shakers online. And I started building this audience and then through me posting consistently, not about like what it is um, that I'm offering or what do I have to, to sell of really me being authentic and genuine, mm -hmm. letting people know what I'm up to, um, sharing things that inspire and motivate, sharing things that um, educate people, um, allowed me to stay top of mind. That's very interesting. So Devani, I, I've heard this a little bit before and even in the interviews of the Funnel Formula, but is there something around you know, a nice mix of that personal content that may have nothing to do with the actual business, but they're getting your audience maybe connecting more with you rather than over the subject that you deal with. Is that, is that something you recommend? Absolutely. People are going to do business with people that they know they like and they trust. So the more that you can infuse you and your personality and who you are into what you're doing, the better. And that comes with sharing things that are going on in your life. You know, mm -hmm. that's building uh, community by showing people behind the scenes and you're, you know, sharing your wisdom and your mindset, and things like that versus just having a business focused. So I actually mm -hmm. say that it's good to have, um, a mixture and it depends on the platform. So like if it's your personal profile, I'm going to be 80% like personal content and then 20% I'll be talking about like business. Um, and then a small percentage of the time I'll like, you know, seed in little things where it's actually more of like a straight offer. But again, you have to be careful with that. You mostly want that stemming from your business page. But the same thing is for Instagram. So Instagram, even though um, I use Instagram for business, I'm sharing things that are inspirational, motivational, and educational um, that are who I am and my mindset tips. And um, what is interesting to me and what's going to make a difference for my audience, whether it's about business or it's about mindset or it's about lifestyle and really sharing who I am so I can be authentic. They can trust me and eventually want to take action on my freebie or my call to action for signing up for a webinar or whatever that may be. That, that's awesome. So that's really a, a cool way to look at it. And I love how business these days can and requires almost that you show up as who you are, be authentic and offer that. Um, and what about, do you know, what about um, businesses that may be, there isn't like one person out front, so it may not be a personal brand. Is there still a way for like personality to shine through when, when, it's more of a team or something that's not like a, behind a person um, to market themselves online. Yeah. Yeah. So 
There's all sorts of ways that you can bring in team members and have figure out like who shines in what area. Mm-hmm. Like maybe somebody on the team is good on camera. Maybe somebody is like a good writer and have everyone like collaborate together um, in creating the content and being the, the voice and the face of the brand. It doesn't have to just be one person. It can be multiple Um, for example, one of my clients, which is a local business, um, the main owner, she's like does stuff, but then she has her other, um, team members that work, uh, in the auto repair shop, Mm. do things where they're highlighting and showing behind the scenes, the camera. So it's like they're highlighting and showing and displaying the whole team. That's awesome. That's so cool. Mm. (laughs) So, so what do you see? Like, these are really great uh, things that are are happening in marketing, but what do you see some of the mistakes? Like what's the number one mistake that you see happening when people are marketing their business? Okay. So the number one mistake that I would say, um, I mean, pinpointing it to to number one, that's kind of hard (laughs) Um, because there's so many mistakes that you could do. Well, well, what are some that come to mind? Like what's, what's the first thing? Yes. And you're, we're talking about marketing in general or marketing online. Oh, um, well let's, let's get specific. Let's do marketing online. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So number one for marketing online would be promotional posts 24 Mm -hmm. seven. Um, mm. so if you're just posting and saying, buy me, sign up for this, nobody wants to do that. And that's actually how I first started on social media, like seven years ago. And I didn't know what I was doing because you're so excited about your product and service. And you think everybody needs this. Everybody should get their hands on this. And so you're just spamming and posting about, um, why someone to buy this. And it's really a turn off to people. So what you want to do is you want to tell stories because stories sell and facts tell. So when you can tell a story about a project or tell a story about experience or tell a story that's inspiring, that's going to get people to pay attention and want to follow you. So that's going to be the first thing. Number two is not having any sort of like connection. So I see Mm -hmm. um, people will set up Facebook pages, they'll set up Instagram accounts and you can't find their face anywhere. It's like, Mm -hmm. who is this? Right. Um, and so it's really important, especially as solo entrepreneurs to know, like you are your brand or if you are, you can leverage yourself and your face to create that closer connection. Nobody really wants to connect with logos. So a marketing mistake, a big one is spending all this time on your logo and your websites <laughs> when really you want to be paying attention to what's your action plan for getting in front of a new audience. And that doesn't take a beautiful website and that doesn't take a logo. You can simply set up in a one page opt-in page that has information about you and a free gift and Mm -hmm. start building relationships online with that one single page, not even a full blown branded, beautiful looking thing. Like for me, that didn't even come later. I think like I hit six figures and then I was like, okay, I I guess I need to kind of focus on some of the branding stuff. And still like it's, it's there in in this next phase of my business, I'm getting more serious with that. But that's like the last thing that entrepreneurs Mm. should be focusing on when they're starting with their marketing. How how interesting. So that is, I I think that's so important. And I think brand is, is cool and important. However, great point that it's not the first thing that we should focus on. Um, it's hard to measure ROI on branding, isn't it? Like, yeah, I mean, you definitely want to look polished, like your images Mm -hmm. should be well and things like that, but you can do so much yourself using tools like Canva. One of my favorite Mm -hmm. apps for creating your own graphics is called word swag. Um, but, but taking time to invest and taking all this time to pick out, um, all these things and create this beautiful, like in-depth site, like really like stick with the basics at the beginning of what you need to do to market Mm -hmm. yourself strategically. And that's going to be building your audience. That's going to be, uh, generating leads and having more people to talk to so you can have that sales conversation. 
That is so cool. You may, you may have kind of led me to my next question actually in that, and that, that is what are the top th three things that people should have in place to achieve real freedom in their business? Yeah. So the first thing you want to have in place is a really good killer free offer. Okay. So my favorite is using online challenges and mm -hmm. why that is, is because you're bringing somebody through a journey for five days and they get a taste of what it's like to work with you. Awesome. Okay. So it really warms up a lead and takes them from that cold lead to that warm, to that hot lead a yeah. lot faster because they're getting a taste and a piece of your information of your trainings for five days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So having that in place is going to be key. Okay. Um, number two is you definitely want an email marketing strategy in peace mm -hmm. in peace in place. So you want to be emailing at least once a week, connecting with your audience as they're coming in uh, to this funnel and you are now having this opportunity to communicate and to build a relationship with these people that have raised their hand saying, I love something that you offered and I'm totally interested and I could be your ideal client. So how do you become besties with them? And that's through great communication with your email and talking to them as if it was a girlfriend or if it was a best friend, but yet you're sharing really good insight. So it's creating a deeper connection with your tribe. That is awesome. I love all of those things that you said. And um, some of the recurring themes in the summit uh, are definitely around relationship and connection that you have with people. So it's, um, that is huge. It's so big. Um, now, I know so many people get stopped up on that free gift. So you like doing challenges. Um, is that like the, would you say one of the best free gifts to offer people? It's one of the best free gifts. If you want to build your audience and build momentum at mm -hmm. the same time. Is it the easiest free gift to put together? No, you could put mm -hmm. together something that's like an ebook that's like hands off and you're doing that. When you do a challenge the first time you have to run, run it live and it's very engaging. Like you're jumping on Facebook live. If you're doing that or doing a pre-recorded video, there's mm -hmm. a lot of things to set up beforehand with it. But again, the results of what you're going to get after that, as far as people converting into clients is way higher than somebody who downloads an ebook that probably isn't even going to open the ebook and it's just going to sit on their desktop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you could do a video series. Um, and those are great too. But again, uh, I love the challenge cause it's like a video series, but it's small bite size, actionable steps five times throughout the week. That is awesome. So what, um, can you share like a quick tip or two around like how to absolutely hit it out of the park with a challenge? Like what are some of the components that are always present with an amazing challenge? Yes. So when it comes to having an amazing challenge is you want to think about what does your ideal client say that they want? So not mm -hmm. that you know that they need, you know, so, um, for example, let's say you are a, you know, weight loss or body transformation coach. Um, you know that they want like a body transformation, but what they want is they want to lose five pounds in five days, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you want to do it something that you can promise, but something that's like juicy, like green smoothie challenge. Mm -hmm. um, one of my clients that knocked out of the park did a five day clean eating challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, so thinking about the wording of what it is that they say that they're wanting versus what you know that they need, um, and making it super easy. So the next thing is making it very bite-sized because if you overwhelm them too much, they're not going to finish in those five days and you want to have them finish with flying colors and feeling exciting. Um, so then they're ready to go to the next step. So keeping it really simple and we, we like to overwhelm and over deliver, um, just because as women, we want to make sure that they're feeling like that, like they're getting enough value and are they going to like this and all this kind of stuff, but that can hinder us. It's really pulling mm. that back, teaching one little thing. And the next thing would be, if you really want to rock it out of the park is doing it as, um, your daily challenges as Facebook lives. And I like to do this in a private Facebook group because it makes it a very connected, um, very intimate community. Mm -hmm. It's not out there, you know, floating on a page and 
people get to really interact and they get to see you and you get to answer questions. So you teach a lesson for a little bit, say about 10 minutes, and then you get to answer questions on the spot. So it's really engaging and it's mm -hmm. fun and it's connective and they feel like, oh, wow, like I'm actually sitting across from the table from this person. And so it creates really great results with those three things in place. That is awesome. Very specific. So thank you. Now, um, I love how you also have it super bite sized, like going through day to day. And I think one of those things is so that they're ready to go on to the next step. So how, um, what's a great way to transition the challenge into your offer or um, what's the, like a key to make that piece work really well? Yeah. So seeding the offer throughout the, the challenge. So talking mm -hmm. about it, like, you know, you have it coming up, things mm -hmm. like that. And then what I like to do is after the challenge is running a webinar or teleconference call. If you're not, if you're not um, comfortable with webinars, you can do it as just a, a call. And that's where you're going to make your offer. So your call to action at the end of the challenge is that you're going to be hosting a masterclass and you're going to be covering blank, 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 which is what you didn't cover in the challenge. And here's why you need to know this. This is your next step uh, of what you need to learn and then getting it on there and then being able to make an offer from there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Now I, I love that. And I love how you're taking the uh, challenge to do all of these different mediums. So you're, you're moving people um, through, through different places. So Facebook and email and either phone or webinar. So that's, that's awesome. Thank so, you. so, um, what go, let's go, go back to social media in general. So, um, how, how is this important in building a business and, and is that like the generating the leads, that's the connection and, and how do we have like a great social media strategy for a business? Yeah. So I think social media is a crucial piece. It's, it is like there are several pieces to the marketing pie that you want to have in place. How important is that social media piece is, is a big piece. It's a very important because it allows you to be able to get your name out there and to be able to market yourself effectively and authentically and not have to um, be hustling around trying to connect with people in your local area, although that's great too. And in the beginning, I leveraged both, but being able to expand that and be strategic and, and find people, you know, all over the world or just, you mm -hmm. know, in your entire state instead that need what you have to offer. So for those that really want to make a difference and an impact, social media is such a crucial tool for that. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I think that's definitely key. Um, now, what would you say the top three ways to leverage social media for making more money would be? Like, what are those top three ways? Top three ways to leverage social media to make more money? Yeah. Um, I would say uh, to generate leads. Mm -hmm. And how you're going to generate great leads is by building connections. So you can do this organically. So posting uh, cons on a consistent basis. Um, content that is either inspiring, educating, or mm -hmm. entertaining. Those okay. three areas you can't go wrong. Awesome. Inspiring, educating, entertaining. Okay. And then you want to um, use Facebook ads is my, mm -hmm. one of my go-tos because they're so powerful and you can yes. target exactly who you want to work with, mm -hmm. where do they live, uh, what kind of brands do they like? Uh, are they female between what age you can really dive in and get really specific and you can put that exact right offer that they need in front of them to get them to mm. get on your email list. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing would be, um, I love Facebook groups. So okay. Facebook groups give you a uh, high visibility, uh, it sets you as the expert because you are mm. running the Facebook group. Mm. And yeah. what's great is that people will get notified when you post in the Facebook group if they have their notifications on. And so they're more likely to get seen as we know the algorithm has changed a lot and your posts are getting seen less and less on Facebook right. business pages. So having a Facebook group is a great strategy for you to really be able to build that connection mm. uh, deeper, be able to serve your audience and convert them into clients. 
That's awesome. So I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I wanted to ask you about, you know, you had mentioned organic social, right? So does, is there really organic anymore? Like, is that even um, a viable option? But I love how you cover that in having a group. So when you have a group, you can do that a little better. Is yeah. that, and then also like that's where paid comes in, right? So you have paid marketing to get in front of the people that you want to get in front of. Is that sort of how to come now, now can you expand, does paid marketing, does that help you also build maybe organic uh, social media leverage moving forward? Is there any kind of relationship there? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So every time you're running ads, you're, you're going to be building your Facebook fan page because people are going to come to your page and then they're going to mm -hmm. like it. And you're still going to get some organic reach on your Facebook page, especially if you're doing Facebook live. So Facebook is really, really, um, rewarding pages that are going live on their page. Mm. So taking that into consideration and then, um, that's gonna help with your organic traffic as the more following you have, and then that's going to spill over. Like, let's say you do a post and you invite people over to your Instagram profile and you do that on, on your Facebook page and that's going to help to build that. So Facebook ads amplifies everything that you're doing. That is awesome. Okay. And so, you know, um, I know you're the expert in Facebook ads and like, I have so many questions about Facebook ads and even like where to start. Cause it is, um, sounds so simple, but it's not really. So, um, just before I, I, I kind of want to know, um, if somebody's getting started with Facebook ads, is there anything that they should look out for? Like what is a common pitfall with Facebook ads? Yeah. So the common pitfall would be, um, not having your pixel installed, right? So I always recommend every single person to, um, download and create their Facebook pixel, put it on your website. So you're starting to track, to track people who click and hit on your website to retarget. Um, and that would be a, a one pitfall that people kind of leave off on. And, uh, another one would be putting too much text in their images. So then your images either don't even get, uh, approved or they don't get much traction. So with Facebook, with the images, it's more about like creating emotion and connection with the images versus like the copy on the images. Cause people are more likely to read the copy in your headline and in the actual body of the mm -hmm. ad not necessarily a ton of copy in the image. So okay. that's going to be another thing and making sure that it's not blues because that's like Facebook colors. You want it to stand out to be like yellows awesome. or some purples or just different pops of colors that isn't yeah. like the Facebook baby blue. That Those are really, really great things. Now, now, do you even need any text on your image or can you just use pure image for that? You can use pure image. Yeah, yeah I always recommend testing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can use pure image and, and, and I've had ads do fine with just the image. That's so cool. And do you, uh, do you use Facebook ads to help promote your challenges also? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I've ran, I've built my entire list from Facebook ads. Um, this last, uh, year, the end of the year, I did launch an online summit, um, which mm -hmm. is my second, only my second summit I've done through my six years of business. So it's mostly been from Facebook ads. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So there are several ways to build lists, right? And yeah. Facebook ads is a great, great option. So I love how you're doing that, but it's more than, and I love how you're doing it more than just like, here's the free ebook or something, but you're really creating that engagement through the challenge. Mm -hmm. So that is awesome. Well, thanks so much, Devani. Now, I know you have a free gift as well for our listeners. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Yes. So I have access to my five-day Build Your Audience Challenge. Awesome. And this is going to give you a taste of what my challenges are about. This is also mm. an incredible challenge where I share some key strategies on how I've gotten some amazing results with social media and how they can too. And it's a really fun challenge. So uh, they get that at no charge. Oh, that's so awesome. And I know um, challenges are such a great way, again, for that engagement and that connection. And anyone who wants to get started in uh, really up-leveling their marketing online, like this is a great way to do that. So go and grab Devney's free gift. There will be a link on this page, so we'll get you right over there. So 
Well, thanks so much, Devani. I appreciate it. And this is the funnel formula.